<laughs> so I'm Esther Margulies. I am the director of the Master of Landscape Architecture and Urbanism program here in the USC School of Architecture. And I'd like to introduce Justin Stainel, the assistant director of admissions here and our graduate admissions specialist. So Justin, say hi mm. and tell people what you what you do and what to expect from you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Esther. I um, I work with you essentially, um, students who are applying to the program. So if you start your application or if you have questions about your application, I'm the one you'll be kind of directly working with. Um, and um, if you have more academic questions, you would uh, work with Esther. Um, but I can help you out with all the all the technical aspects of your of your application and kind of pinch hit on some of the the uh, academic and also the student life questions you might have about um, USC. Yeah, and if you want to, if you have not or want to schedule a visit to come see us in person, please do that with Justin. And um, Justin checks with me in terms of schedule, and we try to make sure whenever possible, um, when we can, that I'll be here. I'd love to. I love to meet you and answer your questions. And we also like to try to schedule these things generally. Uh, good times to visit if you are available during the week are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday afternoons when we have students here um, in studio courses and you can really see what's going on. And we will um, let you know other times when, I mean, there are, check our website for events that are going on. Uh, we seem to have things going on every, almost every day. There's a great lecture yesterday with Larry Scarpa, an AIA award-winning architect, gold medalist. Um, his firm is very interested and active in climate adaptation. He was uh, promoting his new book. I have a copy here. <laughs> Salty Urbanism, which is all about sea level rise uh, in his practice here in LA and in Florida. And uh, I've had the, the um, it, it's really actually a lot of fun and interesting to teach with him in an integrated studio with landscape and architecture students. And he's just one of our faculty that really crossed the boundaries between architecture and landscape, which is why an interdisciplinary program or interdisciplinary school is um, is a real benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, other folks who I see showing up here on our Zoom tonight, we have Shun Lu, who is on our faculty. Uh, in case you have any questions um, that she can answer after we do this portfolio presentation. And then we have, we will have three students here, current students. Morgan Choi is here. So, Hi, everyone. everyone. And here's Job just showing up. And there's Mark Reed. So uh, they're all together in one room here. Um, and they're going to share their, uh, I thought an interesting way to structure this would be for you all to see uh, students who uh, have been accepted into our program, what they submitted as their portfolios. And I'll tell you now, there's a we selected these particular students because they represent a range of backgrounds and undergraduate degrees. And then uh, I will show you a couple for uh, any of you who are planning to apply or are have an application in the works for the plus two advanced placement. Uh, application or uh, any of you have a degree that's a bachelor in architecture, um, we'll look at some portfolios very specifically um, that uh, and talk about how we evaluate those. So I think this is a good time. I think we are actually probably ready um, mm -hmm. to introduce these students and um, have them share their portfolios with you. So Morgan and Job and Mark, have you decided who's going to do this first? Hi, uh, I, I can go first. Um. So I'll just preface this by saying that um, all of the students that you're going to hear from, they're all in the plus three program. And uh, Job, you're probably the app, the person who applied with the um, with the most kind of design background. Um, but that's the that's the purpose of this is to show you a range of, of people, a range of, of undergraduate preparation. Yeah. Um, yeah, I 
Should I start now? <laughs> yeah, now is the time to start. Perfect. Um, just a little preface of of my myself. My name is Job. I'm originally from Thailand. Um, my background is um, I didn't I did a architecture program in a liberal arts college, um, where my program is not as intense like a B arc. Um, but I did have some design background, like myself initially just love sketching and drawings and I'm always drawn towards um, aesthetic um, and visual uh, art. Um, so to begin my portfolio, here is uh, my front cover. Um, please also feel free to add on or intervene with anything, Esther. Um, and I... When I, when I was thinking of making up my portfolio, I thought of creating a narrative that would work to encapsulate all the different, like very wide words um, of my interests in terms of the visual side. Um, so I've done a lot of different things in terms of content creation and videoing or in social media and also landscape architecture internships um, and, or like fabrications. Um, so I try to basically use this table of contents page to encapsulate all of that to show that it is a narrative of my journey. Um, going forward, um, this is just basically like introduction. My I started my journey in architecture with a within an architecture program at my college called Middlebury College. Um, so this is like my intro work, very very architecturally related, and you'll probably see later on that like our uh, other students have very different backgrounds than I am. Um, I've also did somewhat of a startup related um, work. So this was in uh, my sophomore year of undergrad where I tried to attempt to start a startup and did like a pitch competition. Um, yeah, so I, I try to display those in here. Um, going forward, this was a very much more construction base um, design built with habitat and humanity. Um, and through all these, you'll see my my strength in in sketching, um, in drawings, in, in my line work. And that is, that is me. So I, I try to really represent that um, throughout. A little bit of some CAD and program knowledge. Um, not, not a lot, but I do try to put it in there. Um, and here's my like project in my final year at Middlebury College. I try to show research process and um, like some rendering skills that I kind of just meddle in myself. Um, going, that's going forward and just moving through. And here's a, a rogue one. Um, I've actually, a fun fact, like did worked um, in the entertainment industry in Thailand for a little bit. I acted a little bit and I was trying to inter like interwoven that into my narrative here um, as it is not a normal conventional path that people takes, but um, I, it is a part that builds me into my, my, myself nowadays. Um, so I try to interview, uh, interview that in with acting and understanding of set design um, and aesthetic. Um, and here leading on after that it is very sketch heavy and this is just my social media and my interest that I always like to sketch. So I want to show my character through my line work here. Um, and then going on with like my project in, in different countries that I've tried and do. Um, yeah. Um, and after my college career, I had a... a um, a, a two years of work experience. Um, and I worked at uh, this company called Shop Value, which um, prefabricates, um, takes recycled shop six, re shop six waste and recycled them into um, furnitures and, and um, uh, like different things that you could use in your daily life. Um, just as showing that understanding of materiality and um, sustainability aspects and what I'm interested in. Um, it's very, a lot of things in here are very, very, very different, but I try to weave them in into the same narrative. Um, and here's just some other stuff. Of course, the pens, sketches still there um, and some photography. So it is a pretty scattered and it does 
pricked my brain a lot when I try to formulate a portfolio where how I, how am I going to put all these together, um, which just goes back to the front that like I sh choose to be as true to me as, as possible um, and try to read that narrative through what I like most, which is sketching and my line work. Um, and yes, uh, we'll move on to the next person. This is the end of my portfolio and I have like, like time for questions afterwards. Okay, right. how should we do? I'll just pop on here. Yes, I'll pop on here. Okay, hi everyone. Um, so I had a bit of a different application process. Um, it wasn't originally my plan, but I ultimately ended up only applying to USC. Um, and so my portfolio looks a bit different, which hopefully may put some of your minds at ease after seeing jobs highly designed formal um portfolio. And so for me, um, my background, I majored at NYU in media, culture, and communications and minored in digital art and design. Um, and then my professional background experience was in e-commerce in both the home decor and fashion industries. Um, and so I didn't feel like because I had direct um, landscape architecture experience um, that I had one medium and I wasn't sure if it was better to like start a whole new project and um, kind of create new works that were consistent throughout or to just show my range of creativity. Um, and I got very wise advice from a beloved alum to show my range, but that it's really important to make sure you have a theme and narrative. Um, and so I tried to tie it back to my, I thought of my portfolio as much as I could as an extension of my letter of intent. Um, and so this first one, I tied back to an anecdote that was in my letter um, I spent a day cooking with ingredients from her backyard with my grandma and wrote about kind of this experience with her and the traditions behind some of these dishes, um, showcasing both like food technique and photography. Um, and then I also submitted some oil paintings because this is the medium that originally got me into kind of this creative mindset and desire to pursue something creative. Um, Coincidentally, these all kind of show my affinity for plants and natural landscapes. Um, so I chose these paintings. I think it's also really important that like in this program, attention to detail is super important. So when you're photographing other works of yours, make sure you're paying attention to how you're photographing these other artworks, um, making sure that it's clean and um, cropped and just showing effort. Um, yikes. <laughs> that didn't work. Um, so because I minored in digital art and design, I also wanted to show some of these. This was um, a project for a site responsive art installation. So we had to choose any site that we wanted and do research. So I talked about why I um, came up with the idea that I did for this site. And then what you can't see is a video from my creative coding final that was really related to the career that I wanted to pursue at the time, which was e-commerce. And I coded um, an interactive feature of an e-commerce website for a brand. And I tied in a video that I had made in another class. So it was just a way of um, showing multiple works at once and also showing how I was thinking when I was taking those classes and how I wanted to build upon my works um, strategically. And then, let's see. Lastly, um, I did take a UCLA extension open enrollment course before I started this program to show that I was putting in the effort to gain some um, applicable experience. And so I just wanted to incorporate some of the work I did there as well, which was to design an elementary school for a coastal California campus. We had um, the client come in and tell us all the desired programs and we had to respond to that accordingly. Um, so I just wanted to show the relevant, the little relevant experience I did have um, with these hand drawings as well as um, these 3D models to show how I can bring things to life and attention to craftsmanship and detail. Yeah, and then we're on to Mark. Cool. Hello everybody, my name is Mark and I'm a third year of, in the program right now, so graduating in May. So I did this a few years ago, a little bit past Morgan and Job, is they're new this year. Um, 
but I studied environmental studies and international studies in my undergraduate degree from a liberal arts college called Denison in Ohio, which is also where I'm from. So I didn't have any design experience at all, but in my junior and senior year, I started taking courses in GIS and graphic design and sketching, and those ended up being my favorite courses in college. And I was like, wow, it, there seems like there's a career that combines all of these interests and it's called landscape architecture. So I ended up pursuing it. Um, but you'll see a lot of GIS and some sketching and photography in this portfolio, but no real design um, background in, in the hard sense. So here's some GIS work that I did. My college town was a town of about 4,000 people nestled in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. So it was quite hilly and it was just mapping our biological reserve, which is just this forest near our campus. And I was measuring where the highest trees are located on the right. Um, and then also on the left is the general topography. Then, um, I did some mapping on where that reserve is located within the urban area and, and also another study on potential areas for urban growth in Colorado. And then a heat island study for Kansas City, Missouri. And then some sketches that I did. I was always doodling these topographical sketches in my notebooks in school. And <laughs> I found them very interesting and exciting. Uh, and then some photography. So I picked up photography also my junior year of college, and I still use the same camera today. I really love it. But these are all of landscape photos in different locations. This was from a camping trip. And I was really starting to think about what I was seeing in a landscape and what was making me excited about landscape architecture and how it all relates um, this was in my college town as well. And then I also included a writing sample, which I, I would definitely recommend if you don't necessarily have, um, if you feel like you're struggling to come up with something to put in if you're in a situation like me. So I was in a classical art and architecture course, and I ended up writing unknowingly about an author that we we learn a lot about in this program, um, Kevin Lynch. So that was interesting. And I think, is that it? Okay, that's it. Great. Well, thanks, Job and Morgan and Mark. Uh, uh, I think, you know, this shows a really, a, a huge range of what we see. I mean, this really is kind of like just a, a small sampling of the types of portfolios um, that not just are, are submitted, but um, that we have um, identified as showing the kinds of things that we want to see. So as I look across those, you know, things that I see that are um, encouraging are, you know, definitely an interest in an interest in landscape. It's just a general interest, and you can see it can manifest itself in any number of ways. That's one thing. Um, the other thing is an interest in culture. Because our program is really interested, not just in the physicality of landscape, but also kind of the meaning and connection, environmental justice, social justice. I mean, these are, and as Job said, I think Job and Morgan both said that they um, they both worked hard to make their personality come through, who they are as a person. And at USC, in our school, we really look at the whole person. And for, oh, actually, um, can anybody let me know who's here this evening if they're planning on, a, if they have a previous degree in a studio program like landscape architecture or architecture, or is everybody here, um, here without a, who would be applying to the three-year program without a formal design degree? Anybody here who, who's, who is considering applying for the advanced placement? Hi, Esther. I, Hi, I am going to be applying for the advanced placement okay um I, yeah i because i was just i have ariel you too was that a wave okay yeah me as well i have um a bachelor's of science in architecture where oh, i'm going super. to okay great so um i have a couple portfolios to share with you um everyone else is welcome to you know take a look at these two to see kind of 
um, what are students who come in into the advanced placement, what kind of experience they have, what's in their portfolio. But um, Mark, you know, your GIS work was much more than just a technical kind of um, uh, illustration of data. You know, even in those drawings, we could see some of the things that Morgan talked about, a kind of attention to detail, um, uh, thinking about the composition of them, looking, I, I'm sure you worked really hard at, at kind of the color scheme to make sure those colors were compatible. I mean, it's even if your experience and the work that you're putting in there is not, you know, coming from a design program, those are the things we are looking for. But uh, I think it really is critical that, um, Job, you, you hit it on the head. Like, we want to know who you are as a person. And you have a few opportunities to describe that to us. One is in your personal statement, and the other is in the portfolio. Um, but the other thing I'll point out is um, all of these were great examples of really maximizing the space on the page, of making it really easy for us to be able to see and evaluate the work. And I strongly encourage fewer images on a page rather than more. That's something that, um, and for Lizzie and Ariel, that's something that I've seen, which is uh, you know, problematic sometimes with students who have put a lot of work into their design work and then they wanna show a lot. So they do like a two page spread across the page. And unfortunately in slide room, it doesn't really work very well. We, we don't, we can't, it, it's so teeny tiny, it's very difficult to see. But why don't I, I'll just, I'm just gonna quickly run through two examples from two portfolios here, and then we can open it up to Q&A for everybody. Um, so let me share my screen. This guy, all right. So the first one that I wanna show or share with you all is, um, Actually, is a, uh, I've kind of anonymized these, but this is a, and I'm, uh, I won't say, I won't name the person, but um, this is somebody who came to us with a Bachelor of Landscape Architecture from UC Davis. Actually, that's a program where we have uh, had a really nice kind of stream of applicants and accepted students in the past. And uh, I think those students tend to be really well prepared for our program. Um, but this is a uh, somebody with a, a Bachelor of Landscape Architecture degree. Um, for those who are applying for a two year, for the two year program, and anyone who is watching this um, this recording in the future, uh, I uh, absolutely we want to see work that you did as a student. Um, often, I know there are folks who do independent projects or spend quite a lot of time um, in their spare time or maybe in their professional life perfecting something. But we really kind of want to see what were you doing when you were in school to get a sense of how you think and, and what that experience was like. So this is a, a very typical, actually, presentation with an image uh, identify, identifying where the project was done, when it was done, and just, just you know a little bit of information about the project itself. And then it starts out with some analytical mapping, because this is something that we teach. Um, in our program, and we like to know that our students who are coming into the two-year program already have uh, the knowledge and ability to be thinking big uh, at the territorial skill and are, and are putting the time and effort into um, really understanding what that kind of mapping tool can do. Um, also, in terms of representation, I mean, we're teaching in the first year, we assume if you're coming into the two-year program that you have mastered these skills of two-dimensional and three-dimensional representation, at least to some level, where we can help to supplement what you know how to do or refine it. Um, but um, it's um, it's something that we, we definitely think is, is necessary. And then we are also, in our first year, focusing on teaching di effective diagramming and communication. Um, not so much about the content, but the clarity of the information. And then really, uh, if you're coming in from a landscape architecture program, I would say you should really demonstrate um, the kind of fundamentals of understanding how important water is uh, in terms of how it moves through the landscape, um, how landscapes are dependent upon it, what, representing vegetation, understanding that there's vegetation above ground and below ground. I mean, these are all uh, things that that we think um, you should have at least some indication of, of, of mastery of. 
And then one other example from this portfolio, more at kind of that large urban scale, we spend a lot of time uh, and have great studios looking at how cities work because here we are in Los Angeles um, and we want to take on the problems of large metropolitan areas. Certainly brownfields and the, their um, transformation are something that we um, are involved right now, as a matter of fact, in the Inglewood oil fields this fall. Uh, but this also demonstrates, again, some, um, some at least preliminary rendering skills to know that you're coming in with those skills. Different category in some ways is the advanced placement with a BARC degree. Um, and that actually, we're a little bit more, uh, this can be either a four-year or a five-year degree. Um, the difference here between the kind of just the standard two-year program advanced placement and the BARC is um, we jam a few more core courses in there, assuming you haven't had some of those core landscape architecture courses in ecology and topography. Um, we know that, that those are some gaps that need to be filled. Uh, but the kind of work that we see coming in from BR uh, students or applicants show us that they have um, well-developed skills in, in building design at a kind of building scale and larger. Again, sort of understanding how to compose and, uh, and communicate information. Hand sketching. I mean, I, I think that's one thing, Job, you showed us a lot of hand sketching and kind of process which is always great to see and in some ways um, gives us more of a, of a sense of who you are and what you do than seeing only finished work. And then again, um, even in the BARC, like some BARC candidates have really focused on individual buildings and we like to see that you, uh, that you have really been thinking about a bigger scale. And it does, uh, I think the, the other thing that helps us to determine whether the two year or the three year is the right program is um, not just the ability to represent landscape, but to demonstrate that you are really thinking about site, about topography, about landform, um, about how landscapes work, especially for public space. And just like the other portfolios you saw, like it, even better, to demonstrate a range of work, drawings, modeling, uh, renderings, um, professional work in this case. And then, you know, the things that are, sometimes I don't even know what they are in the portfolio, um, but installations, sculpture. And uh, I think even though um, this is a, has been a good indication of a range of work, uh, it's, this actually was um, a little bit more limited than I would say we see in the full range of portfolios. Um, last year, I have to say, we saw a lot of weaving and textiles. Uh, I love, Morgan, I loved seeing your food photos. Um, I know that they're beautiful photographs. And actually, you know, as I think about kind of the industry of food, being a food stylist, like they demonstrate a sense of composition and color and space. And that, whether you're doing it in a drawing, in a sculpture, in graphic design, in cooking, it's all the same thing. It's just different ways to tell us a little bit more about you. So I think that's really, uh, that's the general kind of examples of portfolios we wanted to share with you this evening. And now wide open, ready for questions from you. And I would say if you have, uh, I know we, we set this up as a portfolio session, but um, Justin is here, I'm here. If you have other questions about the application in general, uh, this is a fine time to ask those questions. Yeah. Uh, feel free to shoot us any any questions too. Um, happy to answer. I know we kind of just, zoom through their portfolios and may have missed a lot of parts or like have a lot of aspects that we didn't get to hit on um so in by any means feel free to to ask questions uh, the other thing i'll offer is um any for any of you who uh are curious about the experience of current students in the program 
who are coming in with a similar background. Um, send us an email either to Justin or me. Uh, tell us about kind of what, I mean, we will know once you actually submit your application, then we have a lot more information. Then we know what your undergraduate degree is. We know where you're coming from. We know what your interests are a little bit. And then uh, at that point, it's a little bit easier for us to match you up with someone who's here. So you can ask them sort of more one-on-one -on -one questions about um, their experience in the program. But if you, if there's anybody out there now who would like to connect with a current student who has questions for current students, that's fine too. Just send us a note and let us know. Hi, uh, I had a bit of a question about uh, the composition of the portfolios. I think originally you said it's kind of better to have less on the page. And then you showed a couple of the, the B arc and I'd have the bachelor's of science in arc currently, I'm a third year. And I know it looks a little bit different. So I was wondering if you had any um, recommendations on how much on a page is a bit too much. I know it's all subjective, but you know. Just if you have any comments on that. That's true. Um, uh, uh, there, well, that probably was a little bit much, the, the BR two slides I showed you with lots and lots of things on them. But um, I have to say, on the other hand, it was like once, once I could focus on them, they were uh, well organized and visible. Uh, I do, sometimes we, we get pages that are just so full of a hundred different things. It's just difficult to, it's difficult to focus on them. And then we also, as I said, have just have this problem when someone submits, uh, is trying to stretch and get the, the width of, of a double page spread. And it's um, in the end, like just really difficult to see anything. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, um, thank you guys for sharing um, your work. I was curious to know more about how you decided on the narrative of it and I guess how you determined um, like the general flow and organization of the entire like breadth of your work. You can go, you start. Hi, so um, for me, my, it was, that was one of the biggest thing I was deliberating throughout making my portfolio of like, do I put flasher works and like what is truly me? Um, and to me, I kind of resort back of like, what do I enjoy the most and what projects? Like, I think a lot of part that we can feel lost in, uh, in a lot of times, and I'm not sure if everyone had the same experience, but um, for me, like the part I get lost was trying to show like the final works. And after I kind of looked at all my portfolio after putting the final works out, I realized like, my process actually was the part that shows a lot more about who I am. So these sketches that I do daily, um, and I'm a very scattered person in terms of like my visual experience of like going on here and there. So I was thinking of my narrative of like, how do I tie all this together with something that I like? So that's why, as you see the table contents of contents page that I have, that was kind of my solution of doing that to just compile everything in one page in, in the way of things that I love to do. Um, but for everyone, it might be very different. Um, and I'm sure like, you know, like even Mark and Morgan have different narratives that they wanted to show. And um, so I'm not sure if I answered your question, but <laughs> um, feel free to ask a little more. Um, how, do, how do you pick your narrative? Or, uh, I think for me, I kind of saw it as I had these different things that I saw that I was involved in that were related to landscape architecture, like my graphic design and GIS and photography. But in order to put it all together in one, I used the text and my orientation as a way mm -hmm. to kind of make it more cohesive. So I used, I think all of my fonts were pink and pink and green I just kind of chose like two colors to keep uh bright and exciting but also just one cohesive look to the whole portfolio as a way to tie it tie it all in and make sure that those colors were on every single page no matter what um just little graphic design decisions like that can help a lot 
Um, and then also uh, just, I guess, with the things that you choose, maybe choose something that you know that you're confident is is something that you you were excited to make yourself, not something that you felt like you had to scramble to make just for the portfolio. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with all of the above. I think also it was, this is a great question because I remember thinking about the exact same thing, especially as someone who was making such a big career pivot. Um, and so I think what was really important for me was again tying it back to things i talk about in my personal statement where i also talk about how like my current career plays into strengths that i can bring into the program um and so not only through your works but the captions and the way you describe your work um and maybe what you learned or experienced through that process um because maybe the work alone doesn't share the process as much like what job was saying how he he learned that the process was what was so important sometimes it's the result that you want to show but when you caption it maybe talk about um you know your journey to how you got to want to apply here yeah and then uh just to add on to that you're definitely working on like your personal statement as you go on to that too so i'm sure like having what you are passionate about written on your personal statement, right? Um, and of course, like if your works or some aspects of things that are related to that narrative that you're thinking, um, it's it's just gonna all gonna be connected as one. Um, so as I like as as I sketch in myself, I like sketch like uh, uh, a a tie building for my like like during my from like on my cover page, and that was something that I was passionate about, and I kind of wrote about too in in my personal statement. Um, so I thought that like goes along together well. Uh, so just kind of thinking of like portfolio, not as portfolio, but how it connects to all the other aspects of your application. Hey, a um, couple things I want to point out, Morgan, I really appreciate that you did that UCLA course and, and we're really, I mean, I think maybe for some people who are making that pivot, it's important to to test it out, try try do a kind of test run to see if, if it's something that you really are interested in. But I want to make it clear that it is absolutely not necessary to have um, that kind of very related drawing in your portfolio. Um, it's, um, it's, we're not looking for really in the three-year program, we're not looking to see examples of things that look professional and finished. Um, I think what's really interesting, and I think what Morgan and, and Job can see is that in their class now, we're past the midterm, heading towards the end of the semester, and um, there's already students with varying degrees of design background who have all caught up and are working at the same level in terms of their representation, drawing, and other forms of, of media that they're working in, um, which is important. Um, so, um, so it's you know absolutely we're, what we're not judging your work on is does it look like professional uh, technical work? We want to see more about your sense of creativity and um, and where you're willing to take risks in making things um, for the three year students. The other thing on the personal statement is um, the key um, the key uh, kind of prompt there, it really is, as Morgan said, I think, like, why are you applying to this program? Uh, we want to hear uh, where do you envision yourself in the field? What interests you in the field at this point? And, um, and if you happen to have specific thoughts about USC in particular, that's also helpful for us to know. Esther, I also just want to jump in with some conversation going on in the chat uh, to clarify, because I didn't apply to other programs where I needed to create a portfolio book. Um, once I reached the the uh, portfolio portion of my USC application, I saw that in slide room, it's like individual uploads. So the formatting in my slides were just for the sake of this presentation. They were not formatted like that. They were individual photos of ev like every photo of every painting or food photo was uploaded individually with an individual caption. So just wanted to clarify that I did not upload them as they appeared on the slides. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty, Morgan. 
You're welcome. Just trying to help out. Anybody have any, like, I'm, I'm kind of curious if anybody um, has any, anything they're rolling around in their mind right now that they're thinking, maybe I should add that to por my portfolio, but, or maybe not. Is it, you know, anything you want to fly by us informally this evening to ask about? Yeah, I have a question. So um, I do not have a BARC background or uh, degrees in landscape architecture, uh, and I am pivoting my career. Um, I'm actually uh, in my mid thirties, uh, considering um, pivoting to landscape architecture as a career. Um, so when I was preparing my portfolio, I had some, you know, previous sketchings and paintings and. UX work, but I also wanted to do uh, some conceptual work, um, you know, like just imagining that I am doing um, XYZ landscape architecture pro project, like taking maybe my city as an example, how would I make certain neighborhood better, you know, things like that. Um, I wonder if you could give a couple tips, advice on, you know, how to approach uh, conceptual work. I think it's fine. Uh, and I just, um, I think the ideas are, are most important, not as much the finished graphics in some ways, um, you know, depending upon what your skills are from your previous life or your current life. Um, don't be afraid to like, if, if you're working in UX and you're familiar with software you use to do kind of more graphic design in that area, go ahead and use that and just come up with a way to express your ideas. Um, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't try to um, put them into what might be a, a more conventional way of, of, of drawing things from as, as, a, as a landscape designer, if it's not what you've been working in, because um, yeah, I, I think that's really, it sounds really interesting to me and I'm looking forward to seeing your, your ideas and, and just use whatever way is more comfortable for you. Got it. Thank you so much. I've got a question as well. Um, I've been working for the last few years as a garden and makerspace teacher at an elementary school. And so I was wondering if I could use the curriculum that I've developed. Um, it's not necessarily completely visual, but I mean, I could also kind of find ways to incorporate visuals into it. Um, but I'm just wondering if that sort of creative process would work in the portfolio as well. Sure, Carly. I mean, Mark mentioned a writing sample. Um, yeah. I think kind of any anything you've produced that demonstrates um, where your interest lies is good and your experience. So yeah, I'd love to see a little, you know, highlights of the curriculum. And I, I we have um we have a grad who finished last year who actually was doing the dual degree with heritage conservation, who was an outdoor early education teacher up in Northern California. And I wanna say in her portfolio, there were really cute kids, you know, out in the forest. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I would definitely include a piece of the curriculum, some photos that, that sort of show us what it was like to, um, what your program was like, and, and then just try try to include some other more, more visual art pieces. Okay, sounds good, thank you. I have a, uh, I have a, uh, something, uh, Morgan, I know you tried to show us tonight some, um, a, vi a, a video piece that was in your portfolio. Yes. Um, yeah. Feel yeah. free to, uh, you okay, can share can video. those are the kinds of things I, I sometimes like to talk yeah. about and, and, and let people know are, are perfectly acceptable and encouraged. Like if you have video work, submit video. Um, we've seen some really Actually, last year we got it. We had a really nice um, kind of time lapse piece about creating a drawing, which was fun to watch. Um, and then the other thing, the other portfolio that I like to use in, as an example is we had um, we had a student in the three year program who had a master's degree in music, and uh, she submitted a video of one of her musical performances. Um, so just, this is all about just show us your creativity and your thinking and what you're good at and and Tell us more about who you are as a person.
any other any other open open floor here for any kind of question you want to ask us hi yeah thank you um for all that information I was curious in terms of, I know you said it's going to be a holistic approach to the application process, and I know we're focusing a lot on the portfolio right now. Um, how I'm just trying to figure out, like, so my background is more also conceptual. So I'm also in my mid thirties doing a career change. Um, I was uh, international relations and environmental studies um, and then went into nonprofit uh, youth development work and now has gravitated back towards plants and horticulture. So um, my portfolio, I have less of a sketch or design background, but a lot more practical experience when it comes to plants and horticulture. Um, so I guess my question is, in terms of the portfolio, is it, it sounds like from this talk tonight, it's very heavily weighted on portfolio and design. Um, could you talk a little bit in the application process? So in the in the application evaluation process, we have a um, a standard rubric that we use. And I think there's five different um, evaluation categories. The portfolio is one of them. This is one of these differences between the three year and the two year. There's a heavier weighting in the two year than the three year. Um, in the three year, what we're looking at is we're looking at um, evidence of previous academic success. We're looking at your leadership capability. We're looking, we evaluate your personal statement. Um, and in large part, uh, we're looking to get an idea of, do you have a well-formed idea? Do you understand what the field, what is your current knowledge about the field and what do you see as your uh, potential role or interest in the field? And um, what else? And then this portfolio thing, which is part of it, but it's definitely like if I had, to, I, I actually should have looked at, at the rubric before this meeting tonight, but um, if for the three-year program, the portfolio is, is one of those things, but it is not like the waiting is, it, it wouldn't throw off your whole out. Let's put it that way. It, it, it's not overly weighted compared to the other items. Thank you very much. That's helpful. Thank you. Lena, don't you want to ask us about geo design background? Like, I was, going I, to talk to you about I was going to ask about GIS and like, what's the process of choosing the maps? Um, obviously, like at a larger scale, you probably chose those maps or I don't know, just what, what your process was with your GIS work. I, um, so my GIS course in my undergrad was an entire year. And the first year was more learning how to even use the software. And we didn't really, or the first semester, sorry. And then the second semester was actually making maps every week and doing different types of analysis. So I chose the maps from that second semester that I really liked and thought looked the best. And I did, like Esther mentioned, I did have some previous maps that the color was just off. <laughs> I made sure to only submit ones that I felt had nice gradients and stuff like that is important and it's just i think best to show what your um thought process is for representation in a map and what you're showing and and what you chose not to show as well um so that with answer. that yeah yeah for <laughs> sure but with that um was there a lot of like spatial analysis that you added with that or was it just um, the displaying of the map, like changing the symbology and such like that? I didn't put the any data on what uh, analysis I did into the portfolio itself. It was just the map itself and the legend and then a description. Um, but the maps did have a series of different types of analysis, like uh, heat, urban heat island effects and then uh, a tree height study. So showing a, a variation of maps, not just four that had the same analysis, I think is also important. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. 
Oh, I also was going to say I uh, for Anne, I think, was mentioning horticulture. I think it'd be cool if you have experience in gardening and horticulture um, to show just photos of some landscapes that you have worked on, some plants that you've planted together and show that thought process of like knowing that you already know what types of plants would survive in this type of environment. I think the professors would be intrigued by that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we, we'd like to, and we want to know about that, but also um, I think that's the thing about designing a garden is, you know, and it, it really is a, a study in composition and how textures and colors and form come together. Um, so it's just one, one of the various ways you could do that. But we definitely have had applicants who show us finished garden design work. Um, and I want to say we've definitely had um, just a, uh, well, it's not about the plant. It's about what you do with it, right? Uh, that's when you become the designer, unless you're doing uh, genetic work with the plants. And then we were interested, we'd be interested in that too. Hi, I have a question. Um, it might be super specific to my background, um, but since I am going to have my bachelor's in architecture, I'm wondering like, what guidance would you give specifically for people with an architecture background who maybe their programs, like my program's not like not super landscape specific. So is there anything you're kind of wanting to see in those in that portfolio? Well, I have to say like, um, it is really helpful uh, when I when I look at architecture portfolios um, to see the, that an applicant has an understanding of landform and building siting and all the things that go in, you know, that are, you know, sort of not, um, I mean, it helps us to see that you have the technical skills of, of being able to design a building or sometimes a lot of architecture students are working on things that are not arch not buildings, but they're come under the umbrella of some kind of design. Um, but I, I think if, you know, if that's, that's the thing that I would definitely focus on is, um, to the extent what it, what you have in your portfolio or, you know, people definitely do take projects and expand on work that they've done already. Um, but show us your thoughts and understanding about um, what happens on the ground plane. I'd actually much rather see that, like the design of the ground plane than um, sprinkling green on top of roofs and, you know, green walls and things like that. I mean, um, show us, show us, you know, how you think about it. And also I would say um, if you've done some, you know, the way that you see things at eye level, I think those kinds of perspectives and views where you really do have to focus on the scale of space and the, especially a kind of human scale is helpful for us. Okay, thank you. I also have a follow up question. I've done like more landscape projects, like through internships and such. Would that work be, which was also more collaborative, would that work be important to include in the portfolio as well? All right, that's such a good question. Um, is how to show professional work. And, um, and I would really stress that that it's really important, uh, actually, for everybody in, in who's done any group work be sure to tell us what your individual role was. Um, so we've had uh, people who have a really fantastic professional experience working with world-class firms submit their portfolio. And I have to say, it's kind of a mystery to know well, what, what role did you play in this? So please, please, you know, Tell us about um, where you part, you know, what was your role in the design? I mean, and, and I mentioned showing kind of process and um, earlier kind of things as ideas, work that you did, um, in addition to the kind of more finished drawing or rendering, because it's just very, very difficult, unless you, unless it's, unless it's completely your work, it's very difficult to evaluate. And I would say we sort of, probably don't get the benefit of the doubt if you if you if you present something and you say it's work from a firm and that it was collaborative but you don't help us to understand what part you played in it anything else that's murky or um or that we haven't talked about 
I guess I have kind of a technical question for um, just I'm not familiar with slide room specifically. I think I all my other portfolios that I've done have always been just PDF formats. Um, so I'd be curious if you have any just basic recommendations for how to approach doing a, a portfolio on, in slide room. Uh, well, the thing I guess I would I would tell you is um, like the the portfolios that I share, like when I look at it on my side, I'm always kind of curious about what it looks like on your side. But on my side, I look at one page at a time. And I generally, well, often I'll start at the, I usually start with the first page and I work my way through in sequence, but sometimes I go back or sometimes I go to the middle. Um but it's, um, it is because it's, I mean, that I, that's how I would, I would definitely look at each page individually because you're going to upload each page individually and make sure you're happy with each page and then think about the, the order of them. Um, that's actually probably a, an, uh, I guess this is actually a good thing, um, especially for, uh, for, for you and Ariel. Um, I, I think about the kind of the sequence and, um, I'm not, you know, I don't think we, we don't need to see like sort of your whole history of, of everything from first studio to the last, right? Show us your best work. Show us the work that you think relates best to landscape. Um, and, and, and I would definitely try to include um, some process drawings, models, um, and like job showed, you know, and Mark, like, what are you doodling? <laughs> What are you doodling about in your spare time? Not only the finished work. Thank you. That's very helpful. I think also on just more of a technical uh, note, um, the just keep in mind that PDFs are the only format that aren't allowed on Slide Room, so you'll have to translate it over to like JPEG or PNG or something. And well, we're at, we're at six thirty, and what I would say is, um, this isn't the end. I mean, this is actually, I will tell you, this is the first time we've done a portfolio session like this. Um, so thanks for coming, and I hope we've answered a lot of questions. But if something occurs to you after the evening, or in the next few weeks, or up until whenever you submit your application, please feel free to email us. Uh, and we can either follow up with an in-person meeting or a Zoom meeting or some other way to answer your questions. Um, and then I guess I would say the last thing is um, we're looking forward to seeing all of your applications. And my last uh, sign off is to remind people that we have an open house coming up on um November 23rd, so that's a Saturday. So if you're in the area um, or plan on visiting LA soon, um, keep that in mind. Um, we've sent out uh, emails about it and it's on social media. So um, it's a really good chance to see um, the program and the campus in person. I think when you're looking at graduate programs, it's really important to visit the campus that you're considering. Um, it really gets you situated and you start to understand the area you may be living the next one, two, three years of your life. So I think that's really important. Yeah, I will. Um, I will also say that it is um, it is not possible just to wander onto the campus here at USC presently. Um, please contact us in advance. Um, or if you are outside and they are telling you you need to have an invitation contact me or Justin right then and there. Um, it's a very quick process. Um, and we just need to make sure that um, they have you in the system. And then uh, we're very, you know, very easy to find us, very easy to visit us. We just need a little bit of advance notice so we can make sure that the campus is expecting you. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Thank you so much.